Welcome to the Explore Composites Materials Library. This is laminate sample number 19. This one's infused e-glass. It's just a basic plate with a balanced and quasi-isotropic laminate, which just means it's symmetrical about the middle and roughly all the fiber is pointing in equal amounts in each direction. And um, this is also part of a test on infusion flow, but I'm using it as a laminate sample too because it's a nice example of a typical type of thin plate. It has surface plies of 200 gram woven e-glass and or 6 ounce, 200 gram and 12 ounce, 400 gram-ish three plies in the middle of stitched biaxial, this material here. You can see the this ply, the fiber is running at plus and minus 45 to the edge of the panel and this middle piece has been cut so the fiber is running at 0 and 90 degrees to the edge of the panel. This is the middle ply and this one will is mirrored about that middle ply. It's not perfectly balanced because the middle ply has got the zero and the 90 you know on opposite sides of the center line effectively but it's close and this is the cull plate it's just a thin piece of shelf liner plastic I'm using it here to give good visual you know um, a look at the inside uh, when it's infused because it will make a clear shiny surface and any bubbles and coloration of the resin will show really nicely and also it sort of demonstrates the lack of surface flow media because any resin that flows has to flow through the fiber pack itself and this will be a test of the permeability of that e-glass fiber and for this test I'm also going to use relatively fast epoxy this is a ProSat infusion resin and the resin itself in the bucket is relatively cool but this table surface the mold surface is going to be quite warm this is up around 100 F and so it's warm to the touch and that will really drop the resin viscosity as it hits the laminate stack and will sort of optimize for permeability lower viscosity resin will flow better through the, the fibers there will still be quite a bit of friction so I'm really racing the friction of the resin flowing through the fibers against the lower resin viscosity against the gel time of the resin. And on the outside, the outlet side for vacuum, here's a piece of MTI hose and a nice long peel ply vacuum brake. But the resin probably won't get that far. And I'm going to bag it up, sticking the tacky tape down to the Teflon. This is cheating a little bit, but it makes it easy to take up and here I've done my favorite way of doing it, putting the tacky tape on the bag so that all the pleats are doubled and it's a nice easy way to make everything quick to seal down. You don't spend time making pleats, you just pinch them and making sure there's enough room where the hoses go through. Nice big flexible pleats and I'm going to suck it down here and come back with some resin. You can see on the left my thermocouple for the temperature controlled table is stuck down with some tacky tape. This table is a aluminum honeycomb core with a heating mat underneath which is great for infusion. And here I've teared the scale with an empty cup, come back with the amount of resin I've calculated I will need. This is a cheat sheet for this type of pro set that calls out in 100 gram increments resin to hardener ratios and the total amount that you will need. And so I fill it up the resin to the right amount and then either do the calculation or look at the chart and then fill it up with resin or fill it up with hardener to um, match the right amount of resin. It's a nice easy way to do it and it saves getting goop on your calculator and I'm going to mix it up really well. I like to mix for at least a minute, making sure to scrape the sides and the bottom of the cup. 
as I go. That was definitely not all the mixing. I just cropped a bunch out. And I'm using this little vacuum thing that I 3D printed that nice clips on the edge of the bucket and um, holds the hose so the whole hose doesn't slip out. And cutting a bevel on the bottom of the hose roughly the right length so that it doesn't choke itself off on the bottom of the cup. It's a nice detail, saves you the trouble of having that problem. So here I'm going to unleash the resin. I'm not I'm going to start it off relatively slow to, until it fills up everything and then open it up some more. In hindsight, I could have used a larger hose. There was a little bit of uh, a little bit more resin quicker in here would have been good. And making sure the hose is right down, making contact with the laminate. And you can see on the back side, it's taking up that peel ply. Ideally, you wouldn't have that back there. That's just um, kind of asking for trouble with trapped air that then comes out and gives you problems later on. And you can see the thermal picture of it with the cold resin in the cup and the hot table. And I'm marking it off as I go. See the resin racing up the edge just a little bit. This is a very thin call plate, so it doesn't make much difference. There's not much of a channel there for resin to go through. But you can definitely see it closing down. I would switch to marking every five minutes. And right about here, reaching the gel time of the resin. And you can see it turn yellow on the front as it starts to gel. And this is really about it. So there's the, the flow. I marked the temperature of both the pot and of the surface. And you can see that that resin that had been on the table longest flowing toward the front was hot and gelled quickly and turned that yellow color, which I'm assured by the people at ProSet is not a big deal. I've seen it before a lot. It's just when resin gels quickly, um, it turns yellow and structurally it should be totally fine. So you can definitely see the gradient there once the call plate comes off and the nice shiny surface that the call plate leaves and also because it's a thin wiggly call plate the bundles of fiber printed through on the surface where the the bundles in the biaxial material were not super even the, uh, a stiffer call plate would have pushed that out but here we just really wanted to see what was going on and be able to look through and have it optically really nice there's definitely some air at the resin front which is normal and um, there's there's some of the bubbling right there where as the resin gel that air just wasn't able to get out but it gets it gets clear really quickly and you can see the stitching just a maybe an inch further back this is the stitching in the biaxial and um, all up the panel once I trimmed it weighed eight and a quarter ounces per square foot 232 grams it relatively low resin content and I uh, ended up a little lighter than I had predicted. Didn't quite make one foot 300 millimeters, so under the call plate, but very close. So there's a little bit on the edge there with peel ply that I had to leave on to get my square foot. But you can definitely see the color gradient here and um, the, 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 sort of the stiffness of the panel. But it's a nice, useful thickness and um, so hopefully a good reference for um, a lot of potential uses. Thanks for checking it out.